an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Hi, I'm here to sign up for ISIS. You have come up to the wrong booth, boy. We are recruiting for CARE, an Islamic peace group. What does this look like to you? Some sort of gay pride parade? I understand your oppression. I'm an ally. Boy, get out of here before I decapitate you on camera. Peacefully, of course. This is a Muslim-only safe space. I am a Muslim. I converted yesterday. I'm a genderqueer Muslim, okay? I would do anything. And I mean anything. You would do anything now, would you? Okay, right this way. Oh, goody. Ahmed, we have a live one. Get the device. Ooh, I like devices. <laughs> okay, now take off your shirt for a moment. Ooh, my God. All right, <laughs> strap it on like this. Strap it uh-huh. <laughs> Yes, Ooh, like this. Tickles. <laughs> Ahmed, activate the device. Ooh, is this a vibrating device? Okay, my gay friend. You see that elementary school over there? Yes, of course. There's kids playing and dancing and laughing and frolicking with joy. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Now go over there. Walk into the middle of the school. Throw your arms out into the air like you just made sweet love to Aisha and scream, Allahu Akbar! Wait a minute, that seems a little strange. Now, you did say you would do anything to help liberate the oppressed Muslim race, right? Well... Yeah. Well, this is what needs to be done. It's totally safe. Go for it. Well, okay. Allahu Akbar, kids! <laughs> Idiots. Greetings and salutations. You are tuning into the disgruntled millennial portion of the Kevin Jackson radio show. My name is Brett Siegel, the disgruntled millennial. You may refer to me as Mr. The Disgruntled Millennial, of course. No stolen valor here. Um, we are broadcasting to you live always from Jacksonville, Florida, where I'm always free from your bigotry, racism, hatred, microaggressions, and of course your patriarchy. That was a little audio. Of course, I I love to make fun of the left for eating its own tail. Of course, there is nothing funny about terrorism. There is nothing funny about suicide bombers, and there's really nothing funny about entire communities getting duped into following something that is like existentially bad for them. What do the what do what does do the LGBT community? What do they think is going to happen once this country is islamicized? What do they think is going to happen to them? Are they going to be given a safe space? Are they going to be given coloring books and Snickers? Are the Muslims going to be that nice to them once Takiya is finished once they can finally take off the mask and implement Sharia law. I mean, that, that's where we're headed ultimately, right? A bunch of sluts walking around and glory holes here and glory holes there and a bunch of people just giving each other AIDS. I'm sorry. Look, I have a libertine edge. I really, really do. I can get down and party just like the rest of them. Trust me, I can. Believe me, I can. But this is just out of control. I mean, you're not going to you're not going to march for an actual rape culture in Islamic culture, but you're going to march for victim blaming, alleged victim blaming, victim shaming. I mean, it's not enough for me to say that I think that all rapists should be put to death or castrated or something equally horrible. It's not enough for me to say that I think that rape is absolutely horrible and it's an absolutely terrible, disgusting, heinous crime. I actually have to say that, well, you know what? You have absolutely no agency. A woman has absolutely no agency whatsoever in what happens to her. Now, if you think that these two different kinds of rapes are different, then you might have another thing coming. I'm talking about one where there's a person who is maybe in their house And a burglar comes in and the person has no idea. They're just at home in their safe place relaxing and they get raped by an intruder. Absolutely terrible. Absolutely disgusting. And then we're talking about a different kind of circumstance. When they talk about victim blaming, they're not talking about that woman who was just in her home minding her own business. They're talking about girls who are out at clubs and bars getting super duper hammered, scantily clad, wearing skimpy, skanky, slutty dresses, and then... They put themselves in these stupid situations. They they do not protect their pearl, so to speak. Both rapes are absolutely terrible and absolutely wrong. Both rapists should be punished equally. But let's not pretend that some people have some agency. 
If you're going to be doing that, then at least go out with a bodyguard or someone who can protect you. Buddy system. Watch your drinks. Make sure, you know, you're, I don't know, like, I don't even know how girls do this. You know I mean? Most people do the buddy system. But the, but, the, but the idea that you don't have agency in what happens to you is, to me, supremely anti-feminist. It's anti-woman. That is anti-woman to say that women don't have the freedom of choice and the wherewithal to protect themselves. And that's what these women are marching with the slut march. This is what they're marching for. They want to be, they want the right to be as absolutely reckless as possible. And still be protected. Of course they should be, of course there should, of course, rape. (laughs) Can't even believe I have to explain this. And I can't even believe I have to explain that women have agency. Just like men have agency, women also have agency. I give women the respect of their own agency. To me, it would be totally disrespectful to say that a woman has no control over her circumstance and her station in life. I respect women too much. And I believe the inequality between the sexes too much to relieve a woman of her moral agency in her own life and in her own self-protection. And that is what these slut walk sluts miss. Hey, they can call themselves sluts. I can call them sluts too. They're sluts. Self-proclaimed sluts. These are the people that say, we don't need no man. We don't need no man. I'm a powerful woman. I don't need a man. That was a really awful woman voice. But yeah, we don't we don't need a man. Men are stupid. Men are gay. Screw the patriarchy. These are the same women who, when they get pregnant from their slutty behavior, are going to expect the men in the world to pay for their abortions free and clear. Not only to okay the abortions, but they have to pay for the abortions. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You don't need you don't need a man until you need a man. But no, if I say I don't want to pay for your abortion from your slutty behavior Apparently, that means that I'm anti-woman and that I don't believe that women should have health care. <laughs> oh, my God, lefties, I can't believe you. You guys just never cease to disgust me. Kevin Jackson's suicide hotline for liberals. How may I help you? I'm going to end it now. I'm in my bathtub holding a toaster. I wanted to be a part of the Black Lives Matter resistance to fight the fascism of Donald Trump. But when I was setting a cop car on fire, that fascist cop pepper sprayed me. Oh my god, that sounds that sounds awful. No, that's not the worst part. The pepper spray hurt so much that I screamed out for my mommy. And someone put it on YouTube and it went viral. Now I'm that guy that screamed out for his mommy. Everybody's making fun of me. And everybody hates me. Nobody likes me. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to do it now. I want you to listen to me very carefully. Don't do this, all right? You don't have to do it like this. There is a better way. Here's what I want you to do. Carefully put down the toaster. Get out of the bathtub. Dry off. Okay, take a deep breath. And once you've calmed down completely, drive to the Empire State Building, light your own car on fire, climb up to the top, and do a belly flop into your burning car, you pansy-ass snowflake. Nothing screams moral commitment like doing a belly flop into a burning car, you phony. A toaster oven in the bathtub? Could you get any more cliche? (laughs) What kind of suicide hotline is this? Are you a proud social justice warrior? Do you believe that the so-called facts of reality are nothing more than racist, irrelevant social constructs perpetuated by white supremacy? If you answered yes to both of these questions, you must boycott the disgruntled millennial. The disgruntled millennial threatens the very existence of humanity. He espouses dangerous ideas like small government, school choice, property rights, and worst of all, he shoots guns. He's practically Hitler. You must act now. Conservatives are becoming more and more emboldened to make their own life decisions. We can't let that happen. So whether you're drawing on coloring books in your safe space or setting police cars on fire, always remember to hashtag boycott the DM. That's boycott the DM. Boycott the DM. Boycotts work. 
Again, this is Brett Siegel, the disgruntled millennial. I'm always broadcasting to you live from my safe space down here in northern Florida, where I'm always free from your bigotry, your hatred, your microaggressions, your racism, and that damn dare patriarchy. We don't take kindly to intolerance around here. All right, we got more for you. We will be right back. won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.